everybody please have a seat so we may continue with our last item, item J as in Jack. Where's our clerk? If our clerk is not here, then our attorney can read the, the item. We are back in session after a 10 minute recess. It's now five minutes past 10 p.m. on March 27th, 2018. Our regularly scheduled meeting is back in session. You will, if you don't mind, he's standing right there. Okay. What do you get paid for? <laughs> Two weeks. Second Tuesday. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Clerk. Hello? Oh, I am. Proposed ordinance first reading of the Mayor and City Council of the City of North Miami, Florida, amending Volume 1, Goals, Objectives, and Policies of the City of North Miami 2016 Comprehensive Plan, more specifically, the future land use and coastal management elements thereof, in accordance with the requirements of Section 163.31843, Florida Statutes 2017, and Chapter 29, Article 3, Division 11, Section 3-1102A, and Sections 3-1105 through 3-1110 of the City of North Miami Code of Ordinances by amending the future land use element at Policy 1.2.1 to include language, clarifying, and providing more meaningful and predictable standards for the maximum density and intensity of the land use allowed with the future land use categories by amending the future land use element at policy 1.18.3.1 to provide for residential use within the Northwest 7th Avenue planned corridor development overlay as is permitted within other planned corridor development overlays by amending the future land use element to one create a new special development and transit development overlay with related goals, objectives, and policies and furtherance of the vision of the Regional Activity Center. Two, change the future land use map to reflect the boundaries of the new overlay and to adjust the boundary lines of the existing future land use categories to provide for better accuracy. And three, update various terms and references and correct certain Shrivener's errors, ambiguities, internal discrepancies, wrong and or obsolete references, and other arate as identified by city administration and the state land development agency by amending the coastal management element to include a redevelopment component which relate with related goods, with related goals, objectives, and policies in conform conformity with the peril of flood requirement set forth in section 163.31782F4, Florida Statutes 2017, providing for an initial hearing and subsequent transmittal of the proposed amendments and supporting data and analysis to reviewing agencies and or any interested local government or governmental agency for review under the expedited state review process providing for an adoption, hearing, and subsequent transmittal of the proposed amendments and supporting data and analysis, as may be amended to respond to comments from the reviewing agencies to the State Land Planning Agency for a determination of completeness or completeness, providing for repeal, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for correction of Scrivener's errors, and providing for an effective date. And that was Tab J. <laughs> <laughs> Staff presentation. Thank you for for the record, Tanya Wilson Sejour with Community Planning and Development 
Uh, the request before you is for the amendment to the city's comprehensive plan and also to the future land use map. I'll provide an overview uh, as a justification so the council can understand uh, the amendments that are being proposed as a part of this request. Uh, back in 2016, the city's comprehensive plan, uh, air-based amendments were transmitted to the state DEO. And at the time, uh, DEO approved the city's comprehensive plan and issued a notice of intent <laughs> as required by state statutes. With that issuance and approval, uh, the city was also directed to do subsequent amendments, um, two of which, uh, one was to provide meaningful and predictable standards in the future land use element, and the second was to comply with uh, state statutes as pertains to the peril of flood requirements in the coastal management element. Uh, those were the two mandates given by the state uh, but in addition to those amendments, city staff has met with administration as well as the council and has developed uh, additional amendments that are being proposed at this time to the comprehensive plan. One of them involves the Regional Activity Center. Uh, you may recall that back in 2003, North Miami designated an area called the Regional Activity Center, also known as Iraq in that area along Biscayne Boulevard that includes FIU, Solomia, uh, the west side of Biscayne incorporating its industrial district. And at the time, it was envisioned as an area to attract uh, higher intensity and density and mixed use development. One of the conditions of that approval before the state is that the city would designate that area on the west side of Biscayne, now zoned M1, uh, between a Northeast 143rd Street and Northeast 151st Street as a special development and transit overlay district. Uh, since 2003, uh, the city should have done a text amendment both to the comprehensive plan and to the land development regulations to effectuate that overlay district, but that uh, amendment was not done uh, since 2003. So one of the proposals at this time in order to activate that transit overlay district uh, is a proposal to establish and as you would memorialize uh, what was intended in 2003 to be a transit overlay district. The district at the time, uh, the state had allowed the city to set aside 2,000 residential units uh, to be activated in that area, where currently the underlying zoning M1 would now have an overlay district that would allow for mixed use development in that area. So that's the third amendment that you'll see as a part of uh, tonight's request. Uh, another request that's being made as a part of the comprehensive plan amendment is for a revision to policy 1.18.3 of the future land use element that pertains to Northwest 7th Avenue. Uh, there's an overlay district that was established the last time the comprehensive plan was amended before council. And that district was known as a planned corridor development overlay district. Currently it allows for mixed use development along 7th Avenue, but excludes uh, the provision for residential development there. Uh, if approved, this text amendment would allow for residential mixed use along Northwest 7th Avenue to make that district consistent with all the other uh, planned corridor overlay districts throughout the city along Northeast 125th Street, along 6th Avenue, Dixie, as well as Biscayne Boulevard. And then the last, um, but I will say uh, not minor, text amendment would be just to clean up the Scrivener's area across the comprehensive plan. As with any major overall that's done to regulatory documents, uh, from time to time there are other errors that have been identified, erratas, um, text amendments that are required then to make uh, the document more market friendly, more user friendly, and to provide clarity across uh, all 11 chapters of the comprehensive plan. So what you'll see there also are text amendments throughout just to correct any errors that have been identified since adoption of the plan. And this is just a depiction of the area that I mentioned before uh, for the special transit area, TOD, that area that's in the crosshatch blue, identifying the district that was established and approved by the state back in 2003. And with the text amendment that's being proposed tonight, it would memorialize or implement uh, what was envisioned then, but not effectuated by the city. So this is really moving forward with something that should have been done actually since 2003. Um, the city is actually activating that at this point. And in terms of the next step of what will happen uh, after the comprehensive plan is transmitted to the state, the state does 
their own review uh, for a period up to 45 days. And then when comments are issued through the ORC report, the objections, recommendations, and comments, those are given back to the city to address um, any issues that the state may have identified or any of the other supporting agencies that do review of comprehensive plans. So we'll have up to six months to address and to incorporate any recommendations of the state. And then uh, the plan will be returned uh, to DEO. And then once DEO makes its final determination and review, it will issue a notice of intent. Um, so in terms of the approximation, once it leaves the city, it's about a four month process before the comprehensive plan itself is finally reviewed, amended, and approved by the state. And this concludes staff's presentation on the proposed amendments, if the council has any questions at this time. Mr. Mayor, through you to Mr. Schuer. Mm -hmm. That was a great legalese explanation. So in two paragraphs, what are we do being asked to do tonight? What, what is a simplified version for our listening audience? to understand for what this is about. listening audience, um, it's a text amendment to your comprehensive plan. One, to satisfy the requirements of the state, and two, uh, to also make amendments that should have been incorporated since 2003 in right. establishment of a TOD area along Biscayne Boulevard. So this is only establishing some sort of transportation overlay district along the Biscayne Boulevard industrial corridor. Correct, it's implementing what was already approved back since 2003 as right. well as any right. other but Scrivener's the, errors. Tonight's the wrong important. night to start bringing up what we did in 2003, because I'll be honest, I, I, I'm inclined to ask that we put a moratorium on everything until we can stop and revisit all of this. So if this passes in the proposed form this evening, which type of developer could be at, at our door tomorrow morning, and what type of project would they be able to build? Well, if it's actually passed, um, once you go through that four month process of state review and approval, then it would allow for an overlay, residential overlay district in um, that M1 area I described, north of Northeast 143rd Street. And the M1 and is just, just for the audience, the M1 is the industrial <laughs> district. So this is the depiction uh, on the screen. Right. So if it passes, what you have now I'm only seeing us pretty faces up here on the screen. So. Oh, there it is. There you go. Okay, so um, you're talking about so if it passes, the, the that west area side of this game boulevard in correct. the industrial district. Correct. So if it passes, what you have now as an industrial district would allow for residential mixed use. Uh, gotcha. So hypothetically, that brown area that you see within uh, Central Court Apartments could be activated or any other vacant parcel or site that's been identified for redevelopment. So somebody could buy up a lot in the industrial district and then build apartment buildings or something like that. Correct. Mixed use. So it would be apartments along with any industrial that's there or retail. Gotcha. Okay. I just wanted to make it clear we're, that I understood that we're talking about the industrial district in District 1 in the M1 tonight that we're not talking about Northwest 7th Avenue. Oh, There's, no, no, no. We're no, not no. talking about any other zoned area in the city. It is strictly that industrial district. As pertains to the TOD district. Gotcha. Okay. Correct. And it's the northern half of that industrial district. Thank you. That's the only question I had right now. You're welcome. All right. At this time, if I will open it to the public. Public hearing on item J. Jessica Alston, 1140 Northwest 125th Street. Contrary to what uh, was just said, in your uh, pages it does mention Northwest 7th Avenue, and it refers to the um, density. But first, let me say this. Shame on you, North Nomi. You announced in the Sunday Miami Herald 325 your intent to make major changes in the city code without a town hall meeting and just with just one day notice, council meeting being Tuesday 327, where citizens were allowed only two minutes to speak about it during High Holy Week. Your post is in language only an attorney can decipher, and you published the wrong phone number for which information could be received. You operate with zero transparency. You make decisions, decision deals prior to the public hearing. Sorry, my page just went. And then you come here and vote unanimously five to zero on what you have discussed, what you have agreed to in private. 
zero transparency. Take a lesson from Miami Beach, who publicized their agenda one month in advance and wrote their announcement with simplicity. I'm talking to the Miami Herald page, neighbor section. I stand in objection to having maximum density on 7th Avenue, having buildings that are 10 stories high, small units, that in essence you are building tenement slums. I object to it, and many of the people in Sunkiss Grove, which is the area most affected by that, object to it as well. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Mayor, through you to the attorney, I have to be, I, I, maybe I misunderstood from what Ms. Sejour said. Are we discussing Northwest 7th Avenue this evening? Or are we solely discussing the M1 Industrial District in District 1? One of the five major tax amendments will affect Northwest 7th Avenue. Okay, so, so now let's, let's get, if I might, so if back I could to go staff. Back yeah, back like in the slide, for, and it, for, for it was mentioned, and mm -hmm. I apologize if it wasn't mentioned with clarity. But if you notice, uh, there you go. I know, but I, I got to know what we're bullet. talking about tonight because because I, I thought I was very clear in asking this was only about M1 and District 1, and I Correct. thought I heard so the answer being yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Go back through each of them. She put all of the areas on the record in the slide. Right. I just want to be. I, I want to have right. simple because I don't want to have this. That's why, here's, I'm, that's here's, why I'm going back. Right. This is the this is the flaw that we continue to have. We continue to not speak in simple language and make it clear for everybody to understand. And because we get with the jargon and the, the the, the, the abbreviations and things, people don't understand what we're doing, and, and then we have, even I'm now confused, uh, because I thought we were just talking about M1, and you're telling me we're talking about Northwest 7th Avenue, so. So go back in, in simple English, to the, the, the five major areas. Sure, um, so as it pertains to Northwest 7th Avenue, you'll see the second bullet. It says to revise the policy 1.18.3. Right. I don't. I don't know what 1.1813 is. I don't know what FLU stands for. So tell me, what are we doing here tonight? What so are we being in asked to the do? The comprehensive plan amendment that's mm -hmm. being proposed. You have various policies. Policy 1.18.3 pertains to the plan corridor development overlay district for Northwest Seventh Avenue. Currently, there's a prohibition that doesn't allow for residential in that district. So the text amendment would allow for revision of policy 1.18.3 to allow for mixed-use residential development on Northwest 7th Avenue, in the Plan Corridor Overlay District. So let me be clear then. We're, on, we're discussing two different locations. One, the M1 Industrial District in District 1. Two, the Northwest 7th Avenue Corridor. Correct. And wait, we're being... Wait. Correct. Three other cleanups Three, throughout, your scrivener's throughout the, errors, doc throughout the right. document. Three scrivener's errors, and if right. I could go back one more slide. You're the, you're at the, you're and the state recommendations for revision. One saying uh, establish meaningful and predictable standards in the future land use element, and the second was to implement the parallel flood requirements in the coastal management element. So you have five major amendments that are being proposed. Can, okay. can I just yes. jump in real quick? Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's go back to how this started. So we went through and we had the LDR discussion. We did that last year. After the LDR discussion, we, you know, staff continued going back and reviewing everything that we had done. And we found out that there were some uh, typos, errors, and that sort of thing. So the idea was let's come back with the typos and errors. Then we started looking at other things and saw that there were things that were inconsistent. So rather than come back here and every council meeting deal with you know one scrivener error, one little this, one little that, we said, you know what, let's come back, because I don't want to go through this <laughs> any more than you all did. Let's bring everything back at once. And so it's a, if you read the title, the title's a very long title because we're trying to deal with all of these things at once. So it's not a, we're not trying to put a, pa you know, a fast one on anyone. It was just trying to get these, these cleanups done now once so we don't have to do this every council meeting now see so, that's the kind of simple straightforward explanation we should start these types of discussions with because that makes it clear what we're here to do tonight in part so that that's all i, I I've, I've said this before please i'm saying again please just make it simple for people to understand no that, that was simple that was clear i get that now i get we're cleaning up scrivener's errors we're running i get that we're talking about Northwest 7th Avenue, um, and I get that we're talking about M1 District, and I get that we're talking about flood things. Councilman Galvin, uh, if I may, Mr. Mayor, 
Is this still public? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes, I'm it is public sorry. hearing. This, After that. This, 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 the Hi, I'm Ileana, 849 Northeast, 121st Street, and I have um, questions for you guys to answer. Um, there is a proposed change or correction to policy 1.5.9 in our future land use that allows for bonus density and flexibility in design and intensity standards for developers who hope to put in affordable housing units. I support giving incentives and tax breaks for affordable housing, but not relaxing our standards in density, design, and intensity, and I'd like somebody to clarify that for me. There's also um, a policy change to 1.2.7 that changes the height from 40 to 75 feet in the medium residential housing um, and use. And there's also a plan to policy, to change policy 1.21.6, which is being changed. There is currently a 75% residential, um, um, what's it called? retail use uh, for mixed-use buildings and that whole line is being reduced which it leaves me uh, deleted which has me wondering why is it that you're relaxing our standards to enforcing 75 percent retail use in mixed-use developments so I'd like you guys to please respond to those three changes being made to our future land and development thank you William Prevatel, 11950 North Bay Shore Drive. I don't know if anybody else caught it, but I watched about three hours of video on the Planning Commission. About three hours of a, a group of intelligent, thoughtful commentary about this very same issue. And I'm not too sure if I heard a single word of reference to the Planning Commission tonight. They were endless with their recommendations of what needed to be done, and yet nothing, none of that is evident tonight. It was just glazed over. They went on at end, uh, you know, on infinitum about how we need to increase our, our building heights in various areas in order to make projects possible, in order to make them more feasible, more desirable, to eliminate the possibility of ghetto-type tenements, where if we keep on cramming everything into this artificially suppressed uh, container, that we're going to get that. We're going to get these little uh, rat warrens of, of uh, living habitats. We need to increase that. They also went on at length about exempting the structured parking for so many reasons, for reasons that were above the floodplain, that then we would increase the value of the building, which increases the neighborhood, which increases the tax base. Um, I, I'm not too sure what happened here and, and why everything's lost in translation, but this was really the opportunity that the council had to make some serious changes to improve our, our uh, various plans and to be able to move forward more assuredly. Uh, without it, we're kind of just fooling ourselves. Biscayne Landing, I went to every one of these public presentations, went magically from 250 feet without anybody from the audience asking for it to go further. Magically, it was in the plan at 450 feet. Meanwhile, meanwhile everything else is suppressed at a fraction of that sometimes a fifth, maybe a fourth of that height. So how does this happen? It's your chance to be able to double the building heights throughout the city to exempt the structured parking. It could take place now, and it would be greatly appreciated. Good evening. My name is Chris Zangrilli. I live at 875 Northeast 127th Street. And I'd just like to bring up the fact that um, although staff says this is just a minor cleanup, um, if you look through pages 28 through 31, they're making changes to the NRO. They're increasing the opportunities for density bonuses through affordable housing. They are increasing heights in s certain areas from 90 to 110. Um, I've said it before, you guys really need to protect the R2 single family zoning and to call this a simple cleanup when there's paragraphs and paragraphs of additional language in the LDRs for the NRO adding more opportunities for bonuses. Um, I think it, this needs to be looked at closely and it's not just a simple cleanup. Thank you. Mary Schuweiler Hoover, I reside at 12, uh, 1070 Northeast 122 Street and I am troubled by the 
changes in policy being put forward and not mentioned as up front uh, in plain language that are being addressed with uh, regard to 1.5.9 and 1.21.6 uh, in the changes to the comprehensive plan. Um, the developer that preceded in the, in the lengthy discussion before took, went to great pains to distinguish themselves from uh, housing that was uh, affordable. Uh, they, they talked about how they chose not to squeeze in the maximum amount of units possible. They, they uh, went on and on, as did the previous developer in the planning commission or the meeting that I attended last, where this is what the code allows. Well, this is your opportunity, council, not to permit the code to be expanded further to allow for high density to be for a developer to walk in and say, but this is what you put in your code. Please don't put these things in your code without some thought. Please don't put these things in, in your code without discussion with your staff. Honest, candorous, if that's a word, candid at least, um, discussion about what is being put forward as changes to the code. These have long-term ramifications. You do not want the community, it is not fair to the community to slide these things through and have them come around at the back end with a very upset community feeling that they were sold a bill of goods. Had this not been disclosed, not been brought forward, by the folks who just stood up now, your staff, I'm sorry to say, folks, did not present these things to you as changes to be considered here. They're not Scrivener's errors moder being, being rectified. These are substantial changes, and I ask that they be tabled and be looked at thoughtfully. You not push them through. We deserve better. We deserve better of you. Thank you. Good evening. Ethan Wasserman with Greenberg Trog, 333 Southeast 2nd Avenue, here on behalf of the property owner located at um, 2050 Northeast 151st Street. This is the northeast tip uh, of the industrial overlay, which is the TOD overlay. We're hearing tonight in support of uh, the amendments taking place. We would respectfully request that um, the, the density be looked at in the industrial overlay. What, uh, I'm sorry this is not a larger map, but if you look at the existing um, PCD plan corridor development along Biscayne, which is intended to utilize the, the transit um, accessibility. Um, if you go up Biscayne, there's a break, and then you continue even further north, and there's this additional PCD corridor. This is the missing link, the, where the industrial area is, is, and so we'd like the regulations to be consistent straight along the Biscayne corridor. Um, in light of some of the discussion earlier tonight uh, for increased density in this area, where you have transit-oriented development, where you can have people that can live in areas, live in homes, live in apartments without cars, it should be incentivized, it should be encouraged especially when you have a convenient area that is not near the single family residential neighborhood. This is the type of area where we should see increased density away from the residential community. Thank you. Tanjim Hossein, 900 <coughs> Northeast 129th Street. Uh, Councilman Galvin, I believe you used the word moratorium. I like that word a lot and I wish we had used it uh, with the previous tab as well. Um, I just want to point out that I think I'm echoing you uh, when uh, we say that we're confused. I'm confused. Um, I don't really know what's happening here right now. Um, I have a PhD in environmental science. That means I'm not a very bright person, honestly. I, I know about plants, bees, butterflies. I don't know about this stuff, but I'm here. We're here as residents questioning what staff is telling you about what's being proposed. We already went over these things. You yourself, Councilman Galvin, you asked, well, hold up. We're talking about five things, not one, so on and so forth. So I just want to say this again these things are happening almost beneath our very noses. And I, I hope that you use that word again, moratorium. We're here, we'll continue to be here, and uh, we hope for your support. Thank you. Uh, John Chisholm, 850 Northeast 123rd Street. It, it's, uh, this resolution seemed innocuous enough when it was first being read, but now it's coming out that uh, under the guise of merely Clarifying language and correcting discrepancies, this resolution actually incorpor incorporates a Trojan horse to lower the bar to allow increased density and increased height of new buildings from 45 feet to 75 feet, uh, thereby bypassing the scrutiny that a developer's project would otherwise have to have gone through. Seems like the discrepancies seem to be going in one direction only. The fact that subterfuge is being, has been used to sneak through these changes really smells and I would think it just deserves closer scrutiny. Thank you. Good evening again. Uh, my name is Eduardo Santos Lima. I am the owner of 1030 Northeast 122nd. Um, I join Ms. Uh, Alberton and Ms. Hoover uh, regarding the policy um, 1.5.9. 
also the policy 1.2.7 and the policy 1.21.6. And please, uh, again, I would simply repeat what I said before um, concerning the, the, pre the table uh, I. Please consider keeping uh, the zoning, the, the, the simple house, single family houses zoning. Please keep it at ease and please um, keep the values of our residence, residences and uh, uh, listen um, sincerely uh, the, re the, the residents, right? Please, that's what we would like to say. Thank you so much. Hello, Marisol Medina for Northe <laughs> 1270 Northeast 124th Street. Um, like my neighbors, I am also worried about this, and I do like the word moratorium because it allows me to read over the 84 pages again, make sure I caught everything. Um, loosening the regulations is a big worry because it allows developments to come and kind of like wreak havoc in the neighborhood. Um, I'm also very worried about what's going on in the M1 district since now that directly affects me since that'll be walking distance from my house. Um, so whatever goes on in that M1 district, I did want to make sure that ours will have special um, amendments and things that will protect me from somebody putting a spot masters right in the same spot again, right? We were trying to protect ourselves from that again. Um, and I read over it a couple of times, you know, I searched industrial within the guidelines and I didn't see anything that is what we were going to work towards and it's on record stating that we're going to work towards that and I didn't see it. So I'll, I want to make sure that that gets incorporated and this doesn't get paid forward. Um, what else here? Um, Solomia is like our beauty project, right? That we're working towards and trying to work with them. Projects like that have people that come in here and talk to you guys and get their special um, desires listed on these things. Whereas we, I know we don't have a lot of experience, so we come and we're like, no, no, no. But we don't have a lot of um, input as to what we could do to improve it. Well, I see here today there's a lot of people that are trying to make changes to that and uh, improve it in what ways they know. As for myself, I'm going to consult some of these people and say, hey, guys, you're city planner. How do we go about this to change it in our favor? Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, I touched base on this lead certification stuff. Oh, well, we'll touch topic on that another time, guys. Thank you. All right, public hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd move we continue no. this. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry, go. Go ahead, sir. Go. I move we continue this item and for a period of one month to allow a greater look at the proposals so that the staff has a chance to hold public workshops and so that there is more opportunity to explain to the community what our uh, for plans are going forward. A second, if not. Yeah. So that would be, my motion was continue it for one month. That would be the second meeting in April, not the first. I have a motion made by Councilman, Ga oh, Mayor, Mayor. Okay. Mm. I have a motion made by Councilman Galvin, motion to continue this item for one month, and that motion was seconded by Councilman Bienname. Now, it is, um, no, Michael, Roca Michael, um, one, he said he could. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he said. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> all right, so this is in fact an ordinance, but because it's a motion to continue, I guess I can just do a call vote. So, all in favor to most, this is to continue this item for one month. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All opposed? Item passed with a 5 0 vote. This I I'm sorry, item was continued with a 5 0 vote. So All right, Mary, so that, that concludes our agenda. No public hearing, right? Would there be public Continue. hearing? That, that's, that's what that means. Yes, okay. the maker of the motion would intend that in one month's time we would reopen this for public hearing because various public Our workshops motion. and other discussions might have opened totally different questioning. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would certainly hope we would entertain public hearing at that time. So, uh, oh, so we up to uh, what, Citizen Forum. At this time, Citizen Forum is open. <laughs> Good evening, North Miami. My name is Jim Garrett. 
I live at 11610 North Bayshore Drive, North Miami, Florida. The main problems where our city are addressing our problems in a reactive manner instead of a proactive actions and avoiding clear and concise communications in crisis events. We are our own worst enemies. Look at the Kinsey Rio shooting on Northeast 14th Avenue and Friday night shooting at the Keystone, Keystone Point Park, Park Joe Wild Totlock as perfect examples. The last two council meetings, we have begged for this city council, city administration, and city police department to conduct a security review of our local school facilities, especially our oldest four elementary schools that have not been improved with latest security technologies. Ben Franklin, Gratney, North Miami, and National Bridge Elementaries. Tonight, we want to expand our request for a security review of, of our public park facilities, our library, our Mocha Museum, and any other public facilities that entertains our two most precious assets, our children and our elderly. Tonight, we have a staff, staffing of five police officers and a metal detector to protect our city administrators and our elected leaders at our city council meetings then what is the extra cost of performing a comprehensive security review analysis of all educational and recreation facilities inside our city, including a library and a mocha museum? Last Friday evening at Keystone Point, Joe Totlock told us another incident like Parkland can happen anywhere. By the way, when are we going to re-accreditate our police department? Right now, our police department is not in compliance with industry standards because it's not accredited. In addition, it's time for the top three city administrators in this city to live inside the city limits. If you can take your tax dollars for your well-deserved salaries, then you should be able to live in a city that you probably claim to work and represent. It's like we're living above the store. May God help the citizens of North Miami. Bob Bichon, 13005 Coronado Terrace. My request is simple. I've asked for it before. We've, we're going to have public workshops, workshops and public forums. When we've heard from people, half, the, half of the people on my street do not get the Miami Herald. Oh. All we do when we send out public notices, we put them in the Miami Herald because that meets the statutory requirements. And so the people we're trying to get to, to get some feedback and create public awareness, don't know what's going on because they don't see the notices. This is an opportunity to at least think and figure out new ways to talk to people. It's not that difficult. Other people do it. Please use this to get some feedback on some pretty important issues. Thank you. Michael Etienne, 13655 Northeast 10th Avenue. The reason why I'm up here and not up there speaking, because I'm going to speak on items that was a quasi-judicial matter. And as an attorney, I know that I don't want anything to be used against the city based on the comments that I've made up there. So I'm not speaking at, as my official capacity as the elected city clerk. I'm just a resident. And I, mean, I got a lot of angry text messages from neighbors. Smith, Desume, Bienname. That area in which these individuals are speaking of, see I was born and raised here in the city. That area is in the middle of a residential neighborhood. And I remember the church that was in front of that, um, that vacant lot used to host egg, um, Easter egg hunts. As a kid at the middle school, we used to go there, we used to take our shoes off, play pickup football games right across the street and Robert Martellis, his house. And one of the neighbors there, he knows exactly who Robinson Martellis was. That was the area that we grew up in. Just put this in perspective. And I know that area very well. I grew up there. We used to go to the pool when the pool was there. And then we used to walk across the street to the sub shop and then go play a football game there. Nobody wants a six-story building in their backyard. And I'm living it now. At our condominium, we have a four-story building right next door. And I'm on the first floor. When we look out our window, we see a tall building. And it's only four floors. Every conversation anyone is having on their balcony, we hear it. But we understood that. I knew that when I purchased the condo. And a lot of people were upset at me because I stayed quiet on this, including my neighbor, Ted, who's an NPR host. And I told them, look, I don't want to be heard on this item while I'm up there, but take that into consideration. If you purchase the home, we like being a leave it to beaver neighborhood. We like the fact that we don't have high rises in the middle of residential neighborhoods. And that's why a lot of people moved into North Miami. Other places, they can turn their cities into the new New York City where there's high rises everywhere. But those of us who've been here for a very long time, we do not want 
these type of developments in the residential neighborhoods. And I just wanted to be heard saying that because I got a lot of angry text messages and they thought that I was being a coward for being quiet. But for legal purposes, I didn't want to say make those mm -hmm. comments up there. Thank, Thank you. Jessica Alston, 1140 Northwest 125th Street in Sunkit Grove. I'm talking to the citizens of North Miami. As you can see, neighbors, we have zero transparency here in North Miami. Vote no, 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 no. Vote no to the 120 million 36 year bond loan. Vote no to higher taxes. Vote no for the bond loan. I want you to know that you can go to the webpage http colon forward slash forward slash m dot m e forward slash no bond loan and there's a page there where you can vote your com put your comments and support the no bond loan initiative. We are having voting here in the city of North Miami. Uh, early voting at Nomi Library, April the 26th to the 30th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And on May the 1st from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Please come out and vote. Come out and vote. Vote, vote, vote. Do you know how long 36 years is? That's a long time. The interest on these loans is not, uh, is not stagnant. It's variable. And it's going to go up, 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 up. Save your homes. Save our communities. Vote no for the bond loan. No, no, no. Thank you. Laura Hill, 13075 Griffin Boulevard. And um, I'm not here to talk about the bond, but I will put it out there that I plan to vote on no on every question. And I encourage most North Miamians to do that as well. But what I'm here to talk about today is sewage. I've been dealing with this sewage issue on Griffin and Northeast 131 since before I met y'all uh, during the Walmart fight. I have an email going back to February 12th of 2013 where I complained to uh, one of the previous administrators about the smell of sewage. Something is really, really wrong with North Miami's sewage line on 131 and Griffin Boulevard. When uh, Aleem Ghani was our city manager, God bless that he was part of, or the director of public works, because he knew that system like the back of his hand. And he said, Laura, it smells like sewage because it is sewage. Two thirds of North Miami's raw sewage comes right in front of your house. And that's why it smells, because these pipes are like 50 years old. Okay, so I've been complaining, sending emails. I've got about 50 pages of emails. But I look at my walls every day. There's 18 inches cut out of the drywall because all of that sewage backed up into my house right before Irma. It flew, flowed out of the manholes for three and a half days. You guys might be over it, I'm over it. I'm over the fact that I sit out on my patio and I smell sewage. You have to get up in the middle of the night during these nice cool uh, evenings and shut the window because it smells like a toilet. This is my house. This is my neighbor's house. Okay, so right after Irma in November, we met with you, Mr. Spring, and you said that you would do a study. Thank you. Really? Two minutes for everyone. Can I have one minute to say I want the study done? You promised a study by a third party engineer and that has not even been initiated today. You said it would be done in April and it has not even been initiated. I want the study done. You guys owe it to your residents. Thank you. William Prevatel, 11950 North Bayshore Drive. Not unlike the uh, sewage situ situation over there in District 3, uh, something's kind of rotten in our city. We have people that obviously don't want uh, bonds and increasing their taxes, and we have other people that don't want to see uh, an increase in development, and what will be left is basically a city deteriorating mm -hmm. uh, rapidly, uh, as if has already, and has already incurred this uh, a need for $120 million. And once that bond gets issued, what happens 10 years later if there aren't measures in place? What if there isn't the tax place base in place after that's issued? 
10 years later, we do another tax on top of that for another $120 million, maybe more, because we have other repairs to do. Really need to consider this. And I think the people uh, need to better embrace the benefits of redevelopment, of getting off the floodplain, of increasing the tax base. Uh, our own property in particular, you can go from 50 thousand dollars or so in gross uh, tax to probably two million and if it was raised higher you're going to talk about four million six million possibly ten million dollars on an individual project where else could we do that in the city and go from fifty thousand dollars to potentially ten million dollars on revenue i think you should be looking into that i think you should be embracing it along with that we can have greater green space uh we can have enhanced security It'll be inspirational for the rest of the city. We could finally move our city off the mark. Otherwise, we're just running in place, and things will only get worse. Thank you for consideration. Hi, guys. It's so fun talking to you three times in a row. Uh, Marisol Medina, 1270 Northeast 124th Street. Um, I remember us being on the news, like, what, this week for the sewage issue for another young lady who's still living in a trailer because there's sewage in her house? Gwen West. Gwen West, see that for the record. Um, so that sewage situation, I feel for her on that one, and I wish that you guys would attend to it and do all of the things. I wish I could continue your speech for you. I don't know what else you're gonna say. Um, oh yeah, lead certification. So with that, um, I think we should work on it. I'm definitely gonna write to you guys about different things that we could do to um, encourage as part of the incentive for their bonus density if they did more things that incorporate green spaces um, and better design concepts. Um, and no on the bond until we get more verbiage on it. So thank you, bye. Mary Schuweiler Hoover, 1070 Northeast 122 Street. And I was on my way out, but I feel compelled to come up and speak in response to Mr. Primatel. I think that's his last name's comments. Um, we're not saying as residents that we're uh, flat out against development or redevelopment for that matter. What we're asking for folks is that it's thoughtful, that it takes in, into account the character and the, the vicinity in which it's being placed, that you're not dropping in buildings that don't belong there. If you basically gut from the inside out, you will have nothing but a dead zone. And if you have enough dead zones in our city, you won't have a city to develop. Um, so I, I would, what we're asking for is that we have a comprehensive plan that makes sense that we don't have all these add-on little hidey hole places where we're adding bonus densities for this, that, the other, slapping on art, <coughs> calling it affordable, workplace housing, all of these other things. We don't have enough parking spots for the residences. They're 500 square feet. Who's going to want to live there? If it fails in five years, what's it going to be to us but an eyesore and a pit and a slum in 10? And that's going to gut your community from the inside out. What we're asking for is that the development be thoughtful, that it be well planned, well structured, and that's what we're asking for. We're not against development. We want the community considered, but we want the, the whole community and the residential areas factored in. We have areas that are suitable for high rises or higher rises for that matter. We have areas that are not well suited. And if you place things poorly, you will be demolishing the good things that you have and they will not come back and you will deplete the economic base and the tax base of this community so not against development i don't think any of your residents are but what we wanted is to be transparent mm -hmm. thoughtful and well done thank you okay citizen forum is now closed we are back to the dice for any reports um rather than give a report i had hoped we were I would like to have said a couple things about the comp plan, so I'm going to take the liberty of just making a couple comments with regard to this comprehensive plan. Um, it's supposed to be Scrivener's errors and a couple little changes that the state wanted. It really morphed into a lot more items, some we've discussed. There's a little thing in there in the NRO allowing commercial. I mean, th there's some stuff in here that we need to discuss. But really important about if we're not going to just do comp Scrivener's ears, are we going to readdress the comp plan? <coughs> As you saw tonight, we have an issue. The NRO is not necessarily going to work for our single family residential. As other people have said, one size does not fit all. We've got, now I went over with staff and we talked about some of the deletions or underlines, but we also talked about other Scrivener's ears and other things that need working on. We absolutely must discuss 
parking requirements in the city. We've got language in here saying how we should reduce the responsibility for parking. I'm thinking just the opposite. If we're going to be putting multifamily residential in and single family, we've got to reduce the, um, we've got to tighten up the parking requirements. Also the bonus densities. I know you're all working on it. You said you're working on it, but when are we going to do these densities? They are way too lenient and giving way too much uh, additions to properties that just can't hold it. So we really have to, um, and we have to look at the transitions. We have transitions for those single families outside the NRO, but not inside the NRO. We have to protect our single family houses. So my question is, okay, we're meeting in a month. How are we going to go about this? Are we going to go back and readdress this comp plan with meetings and go back from square one? Uh, it was mentioned that the <coughs> planning commission, they spent hours and they made all these recommendations. We're either going to do Scrivener's ears here and not insert little things, or we're going to go back and readdress the comp plan like we did two years ago. So I, I just want to, you know, that on the record, we have a lot of work. We need to possibly reduce the N NRO boundaries and we, we talked about maybe expanding the PCD corridors. We have a lot of changes to be made. So rather than just voting on this this evening, which I'm glad we didn't, we weren't ready, uh, maybe we should spend a little bit more thoughtful time and get it a lot more acceptable. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to thank staff greatly. Um, from Natasha to Sway to everybody, Rosa, who was involved in putting together uh, what was an absolutely fantastic student trip that we took over the weekend up to Washington, D.C., where we had uh, a group from North Miami Senior High and a group from Alonzo Morning Senior High uh, participate in the, uh, uh, the rally, the March for Our Lives rally on Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It was really something to be part of a crowd of 300,000 people or whatever it was. The, the program itself was incredible. Um, the kids, obviously, um, many of them had never even been out of the state of Florida, let alone have never been to Washington, D.C. before. So it was like a really, really cool, teachable moment um, that I was proud to have taken part in. And I want to thank staff for helping do all the work to, you know, get the buses and everything lined up. Um, it was a long trip, 20 hours up, 20 hours back, um, but it was well worth it to uh, be part of what was that generation's it's re really a big moment for them. Uh, that's the only thing I'll, I'll bring up tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I go? Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to touch on a couple of things Councilwoman Key, Vice Mayor Keyes mentioned. Um, when I did meet with staff regarding the, um, the proposed plan for tonight, I did have some reservation about some, some of the items um, that was in the plan, specifically the 7th Avenue corridors. But I did talk to staff um, about trying to work on, on a compromise, which um, I don't think the time was giving. So I'm kind of glad the item um, was pulled. I do have some issues, and, and Mr. Manager, when we do, I guess the next time that we do meet, if, if um, staff could come along regarding the NRO, I know there's some, some flaws in there, um, but density, we, we have to talk about that. And I am one, I think on, on this dais, I'm very lenient when it comes to, to height. I, I do not mind um, the height at all, but there are some, some issues and there are some, 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 I guess, items that staff ensure me that, that we would, as a city, would not be turning into the other places that we don't want to be. But I, I do need some type of public input when we talk about reviewing um, this magnitude piece of legislation. I don't think we need to go down the route of reviewing the comp plan, but this is important again, and we need to find a way of leverage. How do we, re um, you know, the NRO, I'm not there on reducing it, but I, I we, we need to do some work, I, um, definitely. Moving on, another question. Regarding the sewage issue, Mr. Manager, is it our responsibility Miami or Dade. the city? I mean, the county. Because Miami Dade. Is it my. The, the, the sewage. He's gone. Anybody from public work? Council? Public is outside. Okay. So, 
We have uh, been dealing with the county on the matter. They're finishing up the pump station at the end of the block. So we the, the study that I assured Ms. Hill would be done will get done. Um, I know she has a smell. In fact, what's ironic is in the bond, there's an item about potentially buying properties that are in these weird areas. So we're working with the county. The county, I don't, I don't want to offend them, but they've kind of shooed us off when we presented this item to them. Like, oh, you you guys just deal with it, and they don't want to they don't want to work with us. Yes. Sir. So we're taking we're taking somebody else's bull by the horn, if you will. Okay, but we we got to call them out on stuff that they're not doing, and and um and the residents also. Um, I know you guys are very quick on emailing us. Um, which is fine. That's what we are. But please do it at the other levels as well, because if this, if this is a county issue, and we're trying to work with the county, and because we understand you got, we are your first choice as as, as local elected official. But they are also local as well. Um, Whistlers, yeah. Whistlers, and th this is a, a, a very. I've been to the, around the location. I've been at Dr. West's. Um, um, place Laura, it, it's a problem. Um, the, the fact that it has gotten there, we, whatever that we need to do with the county, this is as big as um, the, the, the preserve that we're trying to um, save. These are talking about, this is folks' lively homes. We are talking about the quality of life. So whatever that we need, we need to do to work with the county, hey, if we have to go against them, which we have done before in the past, let's do what we got to do to make them accountable to do what, what, you know, what needs to be done when it comes to our residents. So I, I do think administration, since it's not our issue, so we want to make it very clear, it's a county issue, but we are, am I correct? Mr. Whistler, Mr. Pierre Lewis, um, if I may ask you through the, through the, through the mayor, the, the sewage problem on 130th and Memorial Highway, is that a, is it Griffin? Well, Griffin, near Memorial Highway. Is that a county um, problem or is it a city problem? Whistler Pierre Lewis, Public Works Director. The the sewer collection on 131st Street and Griffin Boulevard is the city sewer. Uh -huh. However, what we've encountered is that whenever we have complaints or issues there, it's a result of the county's pump station not functioning properly. Okay, wait, okay, I'm, I'm lost now. So it's our problem. No, I heard what he said. It says our line but the pumps is responsible for the county right so if if the pump if the county's pump station is not working properly oh okay. we get the issue but when their station is working properly there are no problems and and, and the problem been then their station not working Prop is it a result of the construction that's going on there or no no, no? no it's a completely different this is a different one it's been there for years so so what are we doing to fix that? Or is it something that we need to work with the county? Well, we've, what we've done since the, well, lately, recently, we did about a month ago, is that we put a monitoring device in the actual manhole where the sewer overflows occur, which alerts us whenever the flow is at a certain level. In addition to that, we have a force main which dumps into that manhole that force main was temporarily disconnected for the county to do the construction on the stormwater pump station, which is at Griffin. Okay. Once they finish that project, they'll reconnect that force main that'll allow the sewer flow to bypass that manhole. So you'll have less flow going into that manhole. You just confused me as much as possible. I but apologize. Let me no, no, not a problem. <laughs> Okay, let me just make it a little bit easier in, in people's term. What are we doing to fix that so next year they don't come here and, and with the same concern? What can we do? The, that, that's the question? that project is wrapping up, and we believe that once they reconnect that force main, it will alleviate the problem. Do we have an estimated date um, when the project will They're, be done? They are behind schedule. They were supposed to um, wrap it up. In February, I sent them an email, um, well, the contractor email yesterday and the county email today asking for an update. An update. But I, I imagine they'll be wrapping it up pretty I'm, soon. I, I, I'm sorry if I may answer. You say it will alleviate. 
Right. As not best not, as possible. not eliminate oh, the problem? We are, it's a, it's been a tedious process. We're trying different uh, mitigation strategies. And um, at the moment, that's the one that seems that'll give us the most um, effective way to address it. I, I, thank you, Mr. Mayor, because I didn't even get it's that. To be Let me ask a, a, a question. Can we, or can you, along with the manager, come back with a plan within two months to give us option on fixing it, not alleviate on fixing it, and if it's a million dollar, then we got to fight the county to do whatever that we need to do. Can, can that be done? Because it seems to be... So let me... Yes, let sir. me and the answer to the question plainly is yes, we can come up with something. That's the plan, and that's what I've talked to staff I'm about. I'm saying two doing. months, though. Well, no. The issue of the timing is I want to see the results of that the okay. system this, being this is what brought I'm saying, back Mr. together. Manager, I don't think we need a study because it's smell. So we know it's smell. How do we fix it? In two months, can you as a director come back with recommendations from us and with the manager to say this is what needs to be fixed? Because if your study, your study might take a month or two weeks, right? So can I address? But yes, my, point, my point simply is we go and we, we go in there now. The engineering firm says the solution is for the force main to work, to be back on. Mm -hmm. we're, then we're back at square one. That's, that's the reason mm -hmm. why I'm asking to wait to that point. Okay, Mr. Manager, and this is why I'm asking, can in two months, we are if you in, want us, If you yes, want us to sir. do it, we will do it. Please, we will do it. because we are in Mar April, so by June, let's say. Okay, we, if we, by will, go, June, we will go do so it. So this hill, you let Dr. West and these other folks, so by June, we will at least know how we're going to resolve this, your, the, the issue around that area. At least we'll know if it's $2 million, if we do it before, then we might have to let her to, to vote for the bond. So that, that might be before. Well, hey, Mr. Hey, we, I'm, I'm trying. You got to compromise, Miss Hill. We're working here. So I think that that would kind of solve that because we that would show because it's been ongoing. This is since I, I was elected almost three years ago of the same issue. So if the county need to do what they need to do. I'm ready to, to do what we got to do with the mayor um, of the county and, and, and our commissioner to make to make them. <laughs> to help us out, whatever that needs to be done, because I know all of us here. The commissioner, right? You're trying to. I'm talking about the commissioner of our district, of your district, Monastine, to make them do whatever that needs to be done to help us to 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 solve this problem, Chief. like the, the, um, Jean Monastine, to help us solve this problem. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question, and uh, but uh, understand that before they start the construction of the pump station, the problem exists. Yes. Or how can you pretend that by by after the construction, then the problem won't uh, still exist? The from because she said email since 2013. Yeah, that's when it was way before the construction. The, the there are occasions when there are sewer backups in our system. It's not a um, unfortunately. It's not uncommon. Um, that, that's not the only location that has ever had a sewer backup. It's a, we evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis. Do you, do you think from studies that it need to be replaced, a sewer line, in the, the sewer line in the area? Well, like we mentioned before, right now the best approach seems to reconnect the, the force main. And from that point, I will get with the manager and, and we'll come back that, to you with... Before um, the construction, the problem exists. But this, this area is of particular sensitivity to me also because it's been, it's been flooding for years. It's one of the lowest line areas in the city. And so there's multiple issues going on here at one time. It's, it's, it's multiple issues. We saw fish in the back of Miss Gwynn's house after the hurricane fish so clearly it's not just it's it's a lot of things going on and that's why I'm trying to be you see I think you hear the reluctance let's not go flying down this path and there are five other paths or five other issues that still need to be addressed Related to this right thing. well yeah, but in the meantime in the meantime I will take the you gave me a direction we will go do it we're going to take care of it. We're going to come up with a solution, and if it's 
If it's $10 million, it's $10 million. Yeah. I got it. And, and, and if I may say something, Mr. Mayor, I understand your, your point, Mr. Um, City Manager. However, it's been since 2013. They could live with fish behind the house. That's that's flooding. That's the, the river. Yeah. We're not talking about the, the flooding, we, which I think we're going to be addressing. I, I saw it because I was riding around. We, we That's one issue. I'm talking about the smell, the, the human waste. That's problem. How do we solve it? And then we'll tackle because we can't solve the whole world and we can't solve it. And I'm sure Miss Hill or, or Dr. West will understand that we're not going to be able to, 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 to mess with the fish coming behind your house right now. We're dealing with, because that's not a priority right now, but the priority is the smell. How do we deal with the smell? If there's fishes or, or flooded area, just the smell. I think that I think the residents will, will appreciate that that little piece to it. That's my that's my thing. Thank you. You finished, uh, yes, my cousin man. Yeah, I'm done. Is this the same issue that's going on on 140? Is it 141st? Talking about Fifth Avenue. The well between Fifth towards Sixth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, towards Sixth Avenue, it's 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 especially during the uh, hurricane oh, that so came. Flooded situation. Yeah. yeah. No, it wasn't just flooded, but it came to uh, my attention that there's supposedly a pump there that is operated by the by, by the by the yeah. by the county. Talking about Fifth Avenue, one forty. Yeah, so we, if we're gonna so target, we have to the, target all of them. The the area, all of the gravity sewer that you're mentioning, they are connected to the same county pump station. Okay, because because there was a gentleman. I mean, I know this. Is, he happens to be my patient. And this guy came to me. I think he went. Uh, he talked to councilman too uh, because that's mm -hmm. in your district. Mm -hmm. uh, and for days, not just his home, his backyard, and neighbors, they were bombarded with fecal materials. Mm -hmm. To his, I mean, uh, above his ankle. Oh. Okay. But so he, and he came to the city, and yeah, apparently, you know, councilman did contact administration, and for some reason he was frustrated for yeah. days. Yeah. Imagine being in a home with fecal materials. But understand, yeah. may, so, may, uh, that's an issue that uh, the city yeah. and the county need to address because yeah. a part of that area Guess is what? unincorporated dead. Yeah, a major part, yeah, right? Right. When you say that's third correct. court from one. 40 to 135 right. and the whole right. area it's city and county yes sir that's uh well, but if we don't take if we're not aggressive enough as we know the county is a big monster you know it takes them time you know to really move yeah. it takes a lot of pressure so we have you know really to take uh, to put the pressure on them to move i mean we cannot have residents living in those kind of conditions where you know i mean it's so let's, so let's not just address this 131st, if we could couple it with, you know, 141st as well. And I know it was a big problem then. And that Fifth way, Avenue, yeah. Yeah, yeah, between 5th and 6th. Right. It's also a county station, right? 139. In the, front of Walks Park. Yes, sir. The yeah, pump too. station is located on 137th yeah. Northeast 5th Avenue. It's county. Yes, that's a county yeah. pump station. The other day, I have to call you on 11.30 p.m. Yes, for, you did. For yeah, it's a question. Smell and, and you had to call the county. And have we met with our, with our commissioner? I'm sorry, Mr. Uh -huh. uh, Councilman. Have we met with our commissioner um, in this, on this issue? I've not met with him on this issue. They've been working staff to staff. Oh, no, I would, county I would, staff to, no, I, to city staff. It's probably unfair. Um, he probably d do not know the, you know, the, the the seriousness of this. If 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 you guys would, would schedule a meeting with him at least to to let him know that we, this is this is bad. I, I do have to give kudos. I, I remember one, one once a couple months ago we had one isolated incident, and Mr. Spring and and, and Mr. Sorry was very very good. I think with your department, and the resident is so happy. I went by there a couple weeks ago. They had similar issues, but it was isolated behind the county adjacent to our property. And your, your staff um, through the, the manager was on a weekend. They did such a phenomenal job. So I know it's not the same thing. So I know something can be done. And these folks had to use the, the public restroom at a gas station because of the smell and all that. They had so... <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Sorry uh, about that. Thank you. Last thing I want to say is uh, I want to give kudos to the police department. I be, I was out of town and I came back, became aware that there was an altercation at Keystone, you know, Keystone Park. Some I don't know if it was accidental shooting or intentional, but uh, this is an event that could have been escalated. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. So uh, so when when they work when they do their work in a positive way, we have to. Uh, we have to pat their back as well and tell them that they did a good job. So the police department did a good job. I spoke, I had the opportunity to talk to the chief and he already told me uh, a few measures uh, that we were already taken and that we are going to take as well uh, to see to it because this is, a, I mean, we, this is a great opportunity we have to really come up with some preventive measures. And one of the measures that I mentioned to the chief, if we can to join with you, <clears throat> at least come up with some signs. For parks, I don't know if it's allowed to put signs that says no weapon. This is a family-oriented park, no weapon. I mean, I don't think any weapon should be allowed, you know, in these in these family-oriented parks. I don't know if it's constitutional. No, probably not. Do we have those? I, I have some very strong thoughts on what we might do going forward from this yeah. incident. So please allow me to run it by. And maybe we incorporate the signage, but I have yeah. an idea for some buffer between the top yeah. and the basketball court. I mean, the, the, state, yeah. the state, legis state legislature has um, has prohibited uh, all municipalities from passing any laws having anything to do with guns, um, and then you all could be uh, personally held liable uh, with, with jail and fines and sort of stuff. Which brings me With jail? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, there's actually, uh, which I, which I wasn't going to bring up, but there is a law. Uh, thank God I got a good lawyer. We, <laughs> no. We've been asked to join the law. We actually, based on the Parkland issue, uh, mm -hmm. there's been a number of uh, mm -hmm. cities that are filing lawsuits against the state mm -hmm. um, to re remove that prohibition. And you all can give me guidance on whether you want to join that lawsuit it's, or not. Yeah, well, guess what? It's Those fine. state legislators, they live, they, they, they're not from here. So, but our kids live here, our people live here, and uh, we have to try our best to see what we can do. I mean, I don't understand it's state, uh, state gun, laws. Gun on public facilities. No, I mean, prohibited, no? But it, because in government building, you can't, you can't go in inside the government building with weapons. Okay. You you want to, you want to, I just sent a letter to you both, I think, today or yesterday, because there was another city that we didn't pass the laws, but they passed a resolution requesting the state legislatures to undo this ban on laws, yeah. and I was wondering if we couldn't at least you, do a resolution um, to the state legislature saying... It's, it's, that, that's you give not me the passing direction the law. and I do whatever you it, yeah, Well, I, yeah. I sent you a letter, so, okay. you know, if you want to bring it up for discussion want, next I'll, I'll time. I'll have a resolution for next month. It's funny, um, Council Vice Mayor Keyes mentioned, because I was going to send you the resolution, Mr. Mayor, from um, Weston, but something similar, so that's fine. I'll, I'll co-sponsor that with Councilwoman um, Keyes, because I, I do strongly. Um, we, we will all sponsor it. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what it is, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. So I, I'm not mm -hmm. adding my name as a co-sponsor till I know what the heck you're even talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Attorney, do you have a report? Yes, sir. Manager? I think I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn? Thank you. Have a blessed night, everyone.